fine. Here we are at the National Biodiesel Conference taking place in San Antonio, Texas. And uh, with me here in an interview uh, in the media room, I have Don Borgman with John Deere. And uh, uh, Don, first of all, we want to thank John Deere for sponsoring the Biodiesel Conference blog. Happy to do that. As well as our coverage on domestic fuel. We're doing this both on audio uh, and video, and so we'll, we'll, we'll uh, uh, see how it all works out, and we'll be posting this uh, in a little while. I guess I'd like to ask you, first of all, to tell us a little bit about how John Deere is involved in and supporting the biodiesel industry. Well, it, uh, that would take quite a bit of time. It's been, been extensive. Uh, started back in uh, 2001. We approved B5 uh, for use of products, and uh, uh, a little bit later on, we started using uh, B2 biodiesel as a factory fill. We've worked closely with the National Biodiesel Board. Uh, we're involved, obviously, with the United Soybean Board, American Soybean Association. Uh, do quite a bit of work in, in the area of trying to improve the quality of biodiesel as well. So it, uh, we have, uh, have quite a bit uh, at stake as John Deere, and uh, as a result of that, we've been uh, pretty involved in it. Well, I uh, know that you have some information that's available for people who are interested on your website. What, what kind of information will they find there? We do. Uh, well, there, uh, if you want to use biodiesel in your John Deere equipment, it explains uh, some of the different characteristics. You know, some people talk about you got this problem or that problem with biodiesel. It, uh, the way we view it, it's uh, biodiesel has characteristics just like petroleum diesel has. We've gotten used to those over the last 70, 75 years in petroleum diesel, and we just got a little bit of a learning curve to go through with, with, uh, with biodiesel. So anyway, on that website, there would be information about uh, using uh, biodiesel, the things that you can expect, some of the things you need to do from a storage standpoint. And in addition to that, there would be uh, other information about how John Deere is going about supporting the biodiesel industry. There's a, a video out there that, uh, that we did to talk about some of those uh, uh, characteristics, again, of biodiesel, make it a little bit easier for people to see. Uh, some information on renewable energy in general, including ethanol, biodiesel, wind energy on down the line. In terms of uh, your equipment and uh, tractors that uh, you're supporting that can run on a biodiesel blend, uh, any, anything you want to point out in terms of uh, what people should know who are interested in, in making a purchase? You know, what what are some of the things that they need to keep in mind in terms of using this fuel and how well it's going to work with their equipment and what John Deere has to offer there? Well, we, uh, we approve up to levels of B5 and uh, recommended a B2, B5 level. I know there's some interest in, in B20 in a lot of different uh, areas, but uh, we've taken uh, an approach to make certain uh, our, our goal here is to make sure that everybody who uses biodiesel has a very positive experience with it out of the box. You know, the ethanol industry, we had a little bit of a, of a glitch back there in the 70s and 80s, and we still have uh, a number of people. In fact, the last survey I think I saw was like 19% of the American public still doesn't want to put ethanol in a vehicle because they remember some of those things that went went wrong in the early days of ethanol. So uh, really from a John Deere standpoint, uh, you buy our equipment, uh, we approve up to B5, we, we warrant whatever you use in your, in your equipment so long as the fuel meets specification, we warrant against defects in material and workmanship. So it's, we're not saying you can't use higher blends, we're just saying that we think you're, you're more likely to have a real positive experience at that B2, B5 level. When uh, here at this conference, uh, you know, it seems to grow every year. It's, it does. looks like it's almost doubling again this year. Uh, obviously, lots of interest in this whole arena. Is, as you look to the future, anything you want to say about what John Deere uh, is thinking or maybe planning? that we can uh, talk about that would be coming down the road? Well, I, I think, you know, first and foremost, we think uh, biodiesel's got a very bright future. Uh, there's some challenges out there, but, you know, we went through those challenges with ethanol, and, and uh, we saw it uh, grow and, and uh, mature, and, and as they paid attention to the things that really count. So I guess going forward, the things that, that we would mo be, be most interested in, but first of all, be quality, and, and probably second, third, and fourth would be quality to make certain that the nation has a very consistent, high-quality, dependable supply of biodiesel that can be 
integrated into the nation's fuel supply. That, that's got to be the first priority in industry. The second one is expanding distribution. Uh, you know, we've got the capacity to make a lot more biodiesel than we do. The, the biodiesel refineries are, are built and, and are continuing to be built. The capacity of the industry is growing leaps and bounds. And in addition to that, we've still got plenty of soybean oil at this point in time that, uh, that can be converted to biodiesel that has not yet been. So uh, there's growth opportunity where, you know, as things develop, it, it always takes a, a number of different elements to come together. And right now the distribution system is one of those that's lacking a little bit. We need biodiesel available a lot more truck stops to put it in, in, in simple terms. And I guess lastly, uh, as, we, as we mature, when we get past that one, there's probably going to come a point in time out here in the not so distant future where we need to we need to be looking at some alternative feed stocks so that we make certain that we can expand the amount of biodiesel that's available. If we used our uh, our soybean crop uh, to to the max, uh, we start limiting out somewhere in that B2 to B5 range. Depends on how the crop is and how much we're going to use, and and we'd really like to see biodiesel expand beyond that. To do that. We're going to need soybeans in the mix. We're going to need canola in the mix. We're going to need palm oil in the mix. You know, there's discussion about what can happen with algae as a feedstock going forward. And uh, so the third thing we'd offer is uh, lots of of interest, investment, and and public uh, uh, enthusiasm and support behind looking for other feedstocks for biodiesel going forward. Great. Well, thank you uh, very much for taking the time for our interview here in our a working media room, if, if you can hear the uh, sound around us, we've got a number of media just coming in. Uh, the opening general session is taking place right now as we're talking. Uh, we probably ought to get down there and see what's going on. I to get back to that. Yeah. But, uh, Don, it, it's uh, good to talk to you. I hope to have a chance again before we conclude the conference here, and we'll just keep our eyes open and see what there is to learn and, and uh, what's coming out from a lot of different sources here in the industry. Uh, that is Don Borgman with John Deere, who is a sponsor for the Biodiesel Conference blog and our coverage on domestic fuel. I'm Chuck Zimmerman.